Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Lutfi and this is my 10th video on learning Campbell Biology. And today we are going to talk about ecosystems and organisms' interactions with other organisms and the physical environment. And these are our main subjects that I will be talking about in this video. So, without any further ado, let's start learning. Okay. In the biological hierarchy, uh, at the level of the ecosystem, every organism interacts with other organisms. Okay, take for example an acacia tree. Okay, uh, that it interacts with soil microorganisms associated with its roots. Okay, uh, and it also interacts with the uh, insects that live on it and with animals that eat its leaves and fruit, okay? Which in this picture, it, the animal is a giraffe, okay? In general, all the interactions between organisms include those that are mutually beneficial, like for example, when a cleaner fish clean the mouth of a, a shark, okay? Uh, it seems crazy, but it's true. Uh, and uh, so both of them benefit. One of uh, the cleaner fish gets food, uh, it eats uh, the remainings of um, other fish that the, ha the shark has eaten, and the shark benefits because uh, the, uh, its mouth is cleaned, so it doesn't have to go to the t dentist like humans. Okay? Uh, and uh, the other, the next one, the next interactions are in which one species benefits and the other one is harmed. Take for example, when a cheetah kills and eats a gazelle, uh, the cheetah benefits but the gazelle uh, is harmed. Poor gazelle, it's gonna be uh, dinner for these cheetah. Okay? Uh, and the next one uh, is one uh, other interactions that one of them uh, are uh, how do I say it uh, are bene benefit from this interaction, but uh, the other uh, doesn't even make any difference for the other one. Okay, take for example when a lion kills, uh, for example buffalo and eat uh, and it eats the most of it, but some of uh, the parts remain, like the bones and some muscle tissue. Okay, and after that, uh, the vultures come and eat the remainings. So the vultures benefit, but it doesn't have any difference. Uh, in for the lions. But in some interactions, uh, both of them, of both of the organisms that are interacting are harmed. Okay? Uh, for example, uh, when two plants uh, compete for a soil that uh, has low supplies of uh, supplies and resources, uh, and eventually one of them dies. So it's harmed, and one of them gets the soil, but it sees that the soil is empty of supplies. So both of them are harmed. And so, in conclusion, interactions among uh, organisms help regulate the functioning of the ecosystem as a whole. And uh, each organism also interacts continuously with physical factors in its environment. Take for example the leaves of a tree. Okay? They absorb light from the sun, uh, take in carbon dioxide from the air and release oxygen back to the air. Okay, uh, in a process called photosynthesis that uh, we will learn about in the next lectures, uh, and the environment is also affected by organisms. Okay, for instance, uh, in addition to taking up water and minerals from the soil, the roots of a plant break rocks uh, that as they grow. Okay.
So, uh, the roots of these plants uh, contribute in the formation of soil, okay? And uh, this is the plant that I was talking about, which its roots break uh, rocks, okay? Uh, but it's a little bit fascinating that uh, this little uh, plant can uh, break open a large rock uh, as massive as this one. Okay, so uh, and so they can really contribute in the formation of soil. Okay, and on a global scale, plants uh, and other photosynthetic organisms have generated all the oxygen uh, that uh, the breathable oxygen in the atmosphere. Okay. Uh, when I say breathable oxygen, I mean uh, the oxygen in the form of uh, molecules, or O2, which is the two oxygen atoms bonded to each other, okay? Uh, and so, humans, like other organisms, interact with uh, each uh, our, interact with environment, okay? Uh, but sadly our interactions sometimes have dire consequences okay for example over the past 150 years humans have greatly increased the burning of fossil fuels fossil fuels like coal oil and gas okay uh, so and the burning of fossil fuels releases large amounts of carbon dioxide and other gases into the atmosphere causing heat to uh, get be trapped or get trapped close to the earth's surface uh, the something called global warming okay uh, scientists have calculated that uh, the human activities that have uh, added carbon dioxide uh, to the atmosphere have increased the uh, average temperature about one degree Celsius since the year 1900. Okay, as you can see here, uh, the, uh, the gases which uh, may include or uh, most of the time include uh, carbon dioxide are released into the air and they are called pollutions, which uh, as, as I said, uh, make the world get hotter uh, every time we burn them. And this ongoing global warming is a major aspect of climate change, a directional change that the global climate uh, that lasts for three decades or more. But global warming is not the only way that the climate changes. For example, winds and uh, precipitation patterns, uh, or uh, the uh, when rain, the patterns of raining are also shifting. And extreme weather events such as storms and droughts are getting more often. And climate change has already affected organisms and their habitats uh, all over the world. One example is the polar bear that have lost much of the ice platforms that uh, from which they hunt and this leads to food shortages and increased mortality rates. Okay, and as you can see over here, this poor and sad uh, bear is not happy. Okay, and as habitats deteriorate or get more bad or get better, uh, hundreds of plants and animals are shifting their ranges to more suitable locations. Okay, for example, they are uh, coming. Uh, uh, coming towards uh, mainland parts to find more food, okay? And uh, sometimes that uh, the habitats uh, or there are no insuff there are insufficient suitable habitats or they may not be able to migrate quickly enough. 
As a result, the populations of many species and uh, are shrinking uh, in size, or even disappearing forever. This trend can result in extinction, which means the permanent loss of a species. Okay, and so uh, the consequences of these changes for humans and other organisms may be uh, uh, very profound. And let me show you some pictures of the animals that have been extinct. Okay, over here, most of uh, all of these organisms. Uh, or species were once alive and they lived on this earth but they they are gone now or they are extinct okay like the saber tooth cat and dire wolf and uh, ancient uh, bison west, uh, western camel all of these have been extinct okay and uh, we couldn't save them and if we keep our uh, works, our uh, giving carbon dioxide into the air and uh, uh, warming or uh, warming the planet or, uh, or the same as global warming, uh, this we will not be able to save any of these organisms that are in threat of extinction and they will become like these organisms extinct okay and uh, congratulations everyone so we have reached the end of another video and uh, this and the end of this video was a little bit sad and in the next video i am going to talk about evolution the, uh, sub uh, so subscribe to see my next videos and happy learning to you all.